Welcome back. Today I am thrilled to be talking to my star Low Content Profits Academy student, Jenny Hansen Lane. Jenny is a wife, a mom to three boys, and a multi-passionate entrepreneur. She loves course creation, digital marketing, and loves sharing her insights of what not to do. She's also currently loving her KDP journey, which she embarked on just this past January, and is already crushing it with net profits of $4,000 and $5,000 a month. Now, in case you're unfamiliar with Low Content Profits Academy, this is the online course that I created that teaches people how to start generating passive income, creating and selling low content books like journals, planners, coloring books, activity books, and more on the Kindle Direct Publishing platform. If you wanna find out more about how to get started with low content publishing, download my free guide, Three Steps to Publishing Your First Low Content Book in Less Than a Day by clicking the link down in the description below. You're also invited to attend my free masterclass, Three Secrets to a Wildly Successful Low Content Publishing Business, also linked to below. You can learn more about my program, Low Content Profits Academy, inside that free masterclass. So be sure to attend if that's something you're interested in. And while you're down there, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell so you can be notified next time I come out with a brand new video. Now in today's chat with Jenny, you're gonna find out how many books are currently in her catalog, how she decides on a niche, her strategy for generating sales with color printing and hardcovers, her ad strategy, what advice she gives to anyone just starting out on their low content publishing journey, and many, many more incredible insights. So let's get started. Jenny, thank you so much for being here today with us. Super excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so you have been pretty much killing it so far on your KDP journey at $4,000, $5,000 months already, and you just got started this past January. So can you just tell us a little bit about how you got started on this journey and how that journey has been unfolding over this past however many months it's been so far? Yeah, thank you. That's a good question. So I essentially was looking for an opportunity to publish a book based off of a course that I had I had created. I'm a course creator, digital marketer. So I thought Amazon would be the best place to self-publish. So the first place I went to was obviously YouTube and just found this beautiful underworld of KDP where people were publishing and finding these interesting niches and making passive income from it. So I thought well, should I try this out while I'm trying to finish my book, right? Like multitasking is always like, really good for you. Just kidding. It's not, <laughs> but I, I got down that hole a little bit because it was so enticing. And so I started publishing books and I was really enjoying it. I liked the creation process and uh, that was January 1st. That's how I spent my new year's resolution, like the new me. And then um, I didn't get a sell for three weeks. And I didn't know that that wasn't normal until two weeks later when I had bought your course. And you mentioned like, you got to give the algorithm some time. So I ended up buying your course at the end of January of 2022. And that really helped me kind of see the vision of where I needed to go. I had published probably 60 books just like for fun, but I didn't really understand the, the method and I didn't have my own framework. So that's something that when I learned that in your course, it was so empowering that I was like, I could publish way more books. And so I went on to publish, I can't remember, 90 and 30 days, something. As of today, I've been doing it nine months and I have 373 books published. Not all of them has, have sold. A lot of them I've tested it out. There's a lot of one hit wonders. But it's been a really fun journey because I feel empowered by the Low Content Profits Academy to create something that could be successful. And I think that, that was really exciting for me. That's amazing. So do you have any background in design or anything like that? Like, are you artistically inclined? Yeah, I actually studied fine art in college. And I went down the printmaking path. So instead of getting to paint or becoming an illustrator, I was hand binding books, leather bound, screen printing, letterpress. So it was a two dimensional art that I'm not really like a sketchy person, but I actually would even argue with my graphic design teacher. I accidentally took an illustrator part two instead of one. And uh, I am a defender. I will defend my stuff. So a lot of times he would just let me take over the lecture and be like, let's see what Jenny thinks. <laughs> and so um, I was like breaking rules before I knew them. So I do have a design sense, um, but the technical side of me, 
really is my weakness. Like, don't tell me to reformat my book or I'm not going to do it for a couple of days. It really suppresses me. So there is a strength there in having a good eye. I went on to be a wedding photographer for 12 years and it was really being away from my family when I became a mom that I was looking for that passive income. So that's what really brought me back to KDP. Right. So how many books did you say that you have published so far? We're at 373 or maybe 379 as of today. And are those all like singular books or are you reusing a lot of the interiors? So I would say probably a hundred of them are lined basic notebooks. And uh, many of them are little tiny workbooks where I had an idea, I had a problem and I've been using certain type of paperwork that I just repurpose into a book. Okay. So your line notebooks, like, are those selling? Cause I know that's like a lot of people struggle with that particular niche just because it's so, you know, it's incredibly saturated simply because it's the easiest one to create. I, you know, I know I never really had any traction at all with any of the um, line journals that I created. Yeah. So I thought that I would have more success with the traditional composition notebook, but I haven't in the way that I expected. I used see a lot of those income reports on YouTube where people have their biggest months when it's back to school. And while August was my biggest month, I wasn't really having anything that said these people are buying this back to school. But I, my best selling book is pretty much, it fits low content perfectly in terms of the pages are repeated. It's not a planner. It's not a workbook. It is literally something that every page is the same. And I had found a niche that I thought would be fun to publish in. And I had seen another self-publisher because you can have, you can have tools from Amazon or Chrome extensions that show you those things. And I thought the design was okay. And I felt like I'm going to try that. I'm going to try and see if I can, I wouldn't have done it if I didn't think I could accomplish it in a design sense. And I knew that I could write a description that was stronger. So I thought with your course framework, I'll just try. And I created one and I took an ads course because I really love ads and it just took off and it beat my competitor. And, and that book, my competitor's book has been in the top 10 for over a year. So I didn't know if the trend would stay. It's been going for 10, 11 months. So I've been publishing more in that particular niche to try to get more top 10 books in that category. That's amazing. So do you think there's some kind of secret sauce that, you know, in order to beat your competitor, like you mentioned so, a couple of things, but, you know, just out designing and out descriptioning and, and all that, but yeah. is there more thought that you put behind that? Yeah. Like if anyone is looking for secrets in this interview it's funny because they're all over but I would say like don't dismiss an opportunity to make a book better by offering a color edition or a hardcover we know that Amazon is in beta and I want to try color and so I published color editions and the perceived value for the customer of a color edition they will they will pay more so if you can create a book that has a color edition interior, you can price it at more, and then you have more of a profit margin to run ads to it and outspend your competition. In marketing, especially digital marketing, if you ever run a run, run ads, they, there's a famous quote by a man, he's like 70 years old, his name's Dan Kennedy, and it's whoever can spend the most on a customer wins. So I had that in my mind of like, what if this book was hardcover? I could charge more because it's the perceived value. What if this book was hardcover and color? I could charge more. And so I did a lot of testing in that way. And there are some books that I combined those things and I just think it was the wrong niche. And so they haven't done as well or they've sold one or two. Or um, I did create a journal about defunking your life and it sold really good. So I put it on ads to my customers because they were all in the UK. And then Amazon policy said, you cannot advertise a word defunk to, it was like a vulgar, it's, Defunk. It's not a good, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, wow, I need to add that to the list of like things you don't say. 
but um, it was doing okay organically. So if you are kind of in the coloring book world, you know that there are some very trendy books that have curse words and they do well, but you cannot run ads to them. Yeah. So I just kind of played around a lot of those different areas, but that those would be like my secret tips for anyone that's like how to break into a niche is is understanding that you can make a compliment product to something that already existed. And that was my goal with the design. I looked at traditional publishers and saw, okay, they have, they have the big box money. What can I do to make a compliment item to this product and run traffic to it? That's great advice. So are you doing multiple, like you have a color version of your book. Do you have a black and white version? And then you also offer a color version and a hardcover? So, so this is a really interesting strategy and I'm glad that you asked it in some categories. Let's think about, um, maybe generational books, heirlooms, things that you want people to keep around for a long time. A lot of journals are hardcover. I remember growing up, my first journal had fabric and, and linen on it and I, and I still have it. And so those are great niches or niches to publish hardcover and raise your price because there's so many willy nilly journals out there, even self publishers that don't take advantage of hardcover. Now, the really cool thing is think about publishing maybe a gratitude journal or all about my grandma journal in hardcover. You can charge more. And then if you decide to run ads to it, what will actually happen is if people feel like it's out of their price point, they will pick the, they will pick the paperback option. So when you look at my KDP account of sales, even though I've sold one book, it's generated over $60,000 of sales, which has brought in about Mm -hmm. 13,000 in royalties. The second net, the second book next to it is the paperback version. So that's why I always tell people like, don't sleep on hardcover because you just never know. Um, now I will such say good advice because yeah, most, I, most advice tries to steer people away from the color just because of the significant hike in printing yeah. costs. Yeah. But that, and, that, yeah, that those are great points. And I always tell people to, um, because my background is in printmaking, I've, I've learned how to make paper and I've learned about paper and the different weights. And, um, someone on my YouTube page watched me upload a book this week and said, you called this coloring book paper premium. And you shouldn't be doing that because on the back end, as a publisher, you pick between black and white, premium or standard. And I had to explain to him, if you go into a grocery store or any Target and you buy a coloring book, it's going to be printed on newsprint, which is a very thin piece of paper. So the customer's perception of a KDP coloring book self-published, it is premium paper. It's very nice and white. If you read those reviews, like this is different paper. So I tell people, even just thinking of it from the customer's perspective, there is more perceived value in a self-published book and self-publishers need to not dismiss or diminish that quality in itself. And um, another topic about paper is that sometimes if your book is really thick, let's say you're doing a full journal and it's, you know, maybe, maybe there's some books like write a line for five years. If that's paperback, Amazon stores all of their paper in a cold storage warehouse. And they do that so it doesn't get moldy. It has to be a certain temperature. But when they get the reams in and they start printing your book, if it's very thick, it will have kind of waves in it. And if you're trying to create like an heirloom thing and you're trying to be cost effective, that might not be that attractive to your buyer. And so I always think, I always tell people like at certain point, there is a reason why we go into hardcover. We see that at universities and colleges when we have a lot to give to people, think about creating it in hardcover because the presentation of it can be a lot more eloquent than paperback. So those have been things that I didn't learn the hard way, but just my background of of, um, knowing paper and art really helped me. But I really feel that there is a lot of um, unsaturation in, I don't want to call it the heirloom, but the the areas of books where people want to keep it for a long time. Keepsake or, type books. Yeah, that's a, that's a better word. Thank you. The keepsake, keepsake, it could be hardcover and you could do really good. Yeah, those are all such great insights. I love all of that. Um, so how many different author names are you publishing under? 
So I really, my, if you've ever done personality test or, or anything like that, my number one strength is ideation from strength finders. They give you your top five. So ideas are like, they just come so many times. My poor family where I'm like, we should try this. So I really like the pen names because it gives me an outlet to be very niche down. And I think that's very important for customer experience. So I probably, I stopped keeping track at 23. Oh my goodness. And so reason- I've got to assume that many of those are experimental and then, you know, they kind of get tossed to the wayside if it doesn't work. Is that? Um, yes, but I haven't had very many that aren't working. They're working and I'll, and I'll tell you one thing that has really helped me is I try to do more of a brand name than a pen name. And I try to think of a pen name that is a brand name that is attractive to my ideal client. So I think if we don't really know who we're making things for, it's harder to talk to them in the descriptions. It's harder for us to write good keywords because we're not thinking like them. And so even looking at keywords and going through the program that you teach, and I love the way that you teach us to pick those seven keywords, because I always think about there are, there are literally seven different ways to talk about a book. And that's what the keywords are. And so a lot of mine are brand names. And I think like, what's a cuter name than Barnes and Noble? And I think it up and I'm like, Barnes and Noble, what did it weigh? But you know, like, I just have a lot of fun with that. Um, And I really try hard not to put any book under a pen name that doesn't fit that customer. When that mom with kids come in, I'm not going to put an accounting log book in there. I'm not going to put a forklift log book in there because I want them to come in and buy everything in my shop. And so when I build out a pen name, that's a good one. Is that a thing? (laughs) Yeah, it, yeah, it is. It is. It's funny. And, um, the interesting thing about forklift log books is that they're bought in mass quantity. So there's a lot I've of people. I've never heard of that one. I'm sure there's a company there's going like, to be <laughs> thousands of people looking that up right after this. Yeah. Chat. It will be interesting to see what's published. <laughs> like what is the, what does the buyer want? You know, what is the cover of a forklift log book? Oh my so gosh. When I have an idea for a book, I think about the pen name and then I immediately, I would almost do it like a, like a triangle, the name the book. And then I think, what is the compliment to this book? If they have this book, they're trying to lose weight and maybe it's a a weight loss journal. Maybe it's a 50, 50 mindset tricks PDF or something. So I really try to build compliments in my shop. So when they walk in, it feels like if I could create a boutique shop in real life, I would do it 50 times over because people will pay more and they'll really feel like, Oh, they know they're thinking of the problems. And In marketing, we always talk about sell the thing that sells the thing. So if we can think about a solution that we're providing and then think about, okay, after they start losing weight, what's going to be their next problem and then create that next book. And so I, I, that's the advice I give to everybody about pen names, because once someone finds something that they love, people don't fall in love with businesses. They fall in love with people. They'll want to buy more from you. So sometimes I'm like, I should have put that under my brand name, Jenny Hanson Lane but I am very strategic about building a business and helping business owners that the things that I'm interested in with art don't really fit in there. But I'm really grateful that I have that outlet because I have a lot of weird things that I'm interested in. You've got a marketer's brain and these are all such great, great insights and have clearly given you a major leg up. That's just amazing. So how do you initially decide on which niches to pursue? So in the beginning, I did whatever I wanted. Cause I was like, this is so cool. And then, uh, when, it, when I wasn't making money from that, I decided to take your course. I took some other courses. Um, I did like a color course just to get an idea of, of what that was like. I've taken some ad courses, but really, um, I thought about the things that I used every day that I wasn't getting from Amazon. So I have a of tracking things online with Excel sheets. And so I thought about, you know, this would be nice in book form. So I published that in a niche and it, and it has sold minimal. I haven't put it to ads because it is a paperback and it is short, but I have thought about how I could make that better for me. And then I know people that would want that same result. Other times, um, if I see a keyword, I, I'm always looking at keywords. I think keyword homework is a really important part. I feel like it's the hydration of KDP. So if you're not looking up keywords, your, your business is getting dehydrated. So 
I don't know, they say you're supposed to drink half your body weight in ounces, that number. And I think keyword stuff is really underlooked. I think a lot of people don't do it enough. And then they're, they're mad in those YouTube comments, like my books aren't selling. And it's like, are you talking to your customers in seven different ways? And yeah, so the really, there's a lot of mystery surrounding keywords for a lot of people. Like it's these seven empty boxes and what the yeah. hell are you supposed to put in there? I think the most unique thing about KDP is when I decided, when I saw a competitive book and I felt confident to compete with it and I launched it, um, that book became a keyword for me, which was really powerful. My pen name is now a keyword. And so I felt like, wow, you really, I'm not creating a new niche, but I came really close to creating something. And I did do something. I created something that didn't ex exist before. The competition, it was either hardback or paperback and I mixed it up. It was either black and white and I put it in color. So when we talk about like there really is beauty in not copying somebody and creating something that doesn't exist before. And I believe that a tide raises all the boats. So I even think that book that I competed with might be selling better now because people that weren't really into my design saw theirs and bought it. So I think there's just a lot of power in that. And I kind of got off track with your question because it's hard for me to answer exactly how I know what to publish but I will not continue in the process if I'm excited, if I don't get it validated on KDP. And so I'll do you, that. I'll do that through amazon.com, the freeway, right? I'll type it in in incognito to make sure it's there. I'll check publisher rocket. That was the first software piece I ever bought. And then I will take it to Bookbeam, and I'll take all those numbers together and then decide if I think it's worth it. So and sorry, what's, what is BookBeam for people? That so don't... BookBeam is an app that allows you to track other books that you're competing with. It allows you to do um, keyword research. They're not an American-based company. I want to say he's Danish. He has a YouTube channel. And um, I believe that his keyword processes are more correct than publisher rocket and i'll tell you why because i have tried some that did really well in publisher rocket and then i went and matched it with bookbeam and it, it wasn't as strong and vice versa but the niches that i did really well in bookbeam really reinforced that like by by thousands where i looked up a search and it was over five thousand a month um, Bookbean does not tell you the competition number. And so I think that's a really important part. If you are not super confident in your design skills, I think it's really important to use Publisher Rocket to find the niches where there's not a lot of competition because you, you will sell those books. But I have met KDP people that love to publish in competitive niches, niches. And I am of no opinion that one is better than the other. But I think if you're a person that you need quick wins, I really do believe that doing the homework for KDP will pay off in terms of like getting the keywords down. So Bookbeam, I use a little bit more. It is $39 a month, but that has proven to be a good investment for the current books that I have. And as I'm moving into high content, I will use Bookbeam in um associated with publisher rocket so you're using publisher rocket to kind of discover niches and keywords and and uh the competition and then you're going over to book beam and that is what is book beam telling you so i'm using book beam for the same reason that i'm using publisher rocket it's just giving me different analytics in search numbers search just numbers, to give okay. me an idea and i do believe that book beam is a little bit more current in um, if there's people searching it, you get a better number. And I, and I guess I would say it gives me more positive feedback. I think sometimes I go and publish a rocket and I'm like, no one's searching for this. But then I actually go into amazon.com and I find it. So I'm like, okay, this is kind of, this is kind of interesting. And to be honest, when I, when I started off with my book that I have now scaled to 1200 and or maybe 1900 in sales this month units, um, it wasn't, it was maybe 2000 searches per month. 
and then book beam was like 4,500. So it kind of gave me like, okay, I should actually just try it out. And I think because I got three of them in the top 50 for my shop, that increased the search number too. Do you have a minimum threshold in terms of how many searches that you like to see per month to kind of green light a niche or a keyword? So, so I have, when I told you that I made, that I used to track food and I made a book for that, there wasn't really a search for that because I put a religious twist on it, you know, like, and, um, but I was okay with that. And there was maybe like, I couldn't even tell you if there was even a number. I was just, I was that passionate about publishing it. And so when I, when I see a sell for that, I am so excited. Cause I'm like, there wasn't even a demand, but that's someone like me that like, doesn't want to do this journey alone, like wants to do it with a higher power. So, um, for things like that, like I just took the risk understanding that it may not pay off. And I think that's important as someone like me, that's an artist where like, I'm going to do this for me. And if I have it printed, that's better than going to the print shop and like trying to stand in line to get it done. So in terms of that, I like to get something that's over a thousand in the searches. And I really haven't found success in like composition notebooks niche down to like gnomes and Santa and things like that. So I really haven't, I really haven't done that, but if it's over a thousand, um, I'll get excited. I will tell you that if, if there's a category that's over 10,000 in competition, I'm less likely to publish in it because I don't believe that it's niched, niched down enough. And they, and in marketing, we always say that there are riches in the niches because there's just a group of people that are really underserved. And that's a really exciting thing about KDP, right? Like all the forklift drivers that like now they have log books. And so there yeah, really, there's going to be a lot more of them after today. There's well. really so <laughs> many, there's really so many things that, um, where people are underserved. And I would say like, that's a good personal practice. If you're a self publisher is to write down the ways that you feel underserved because there is more passion in your purpose when it comes from your own pain. Like I tell people like there's struggles that turn to story. And so if there's something you're like, why isn't this out there? Sometimes you create a solution. And I believe my, my, my shop that's doing really well provides a solution. And it's kind of polarizing because I get some bad reviews because people really don't like the book. And then I get a ton of people that like it, but I'm solving a problem and not everyone believes that problem needs to be solved. And I think that's really interesting too. And so Everyone always talks about like, oh, this is really saturated. It is if you're copying somebody. So don't copy somebody. Put your twist on it. Put what makes it exciting for you. And even just the way you talk to a customer in the description can set you apart. And I had someone that told me they hadn't had sales. And I said, do you want me to review your books? You know, I'll be confident. I won't copy you. Send me. And and their descriptions were like, this is a book, eight and a half by 11. And I was like, okay, now imagine walking into a bookstore. And you pick up a book and the store shopkeeper says, that's a book. It's eight and a half by 11. And he was like, <laughs> oh, don't embarrass me. But I think we do that. I think we forget the customer experience that like, hey, tell them, imagine having this coloring book in your home and your house is so quiet because your kids are coloring. Like, take my money. I have three kids. Yes. You got to paint that picture and get that shopper into it, that emotional zone that's like, you know, yes, I need this book. Exactly. Take my money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so on my YouTube channel, I've taught a, um, uh, ad copy. His name is Ray Edwards and he teaches copywriting and he teaches the pastor method method. It's P A S T O R. And it's starting with the problem or the person it's agitating that problem. And then it's providing that solution, having a testimony of what their life is like after presenting the offer. And then the response is like calling them to action. So I tell people like, if you're not selling books and you feel so good about your keywords and you know, your, your cover is beautiful, talk to your customer different. And it, I think it makes a difference. Yeah. That's all such good advice. Um, so I know that you like to run ads on your books. Can you talk a little bit about your ad strategy? Yeah. So Amazon is really great in comparison to other social media platforms because you don't pay for your book to be shown. So I essentially see that as free advertising because you're not paying for impressions. Impressions is anytime it comes on someone's screen. And so you're only paid when they, you know, you're only charged when an item is clicked on. 
So I took a different couple different ads courses. I watched the video inside of your trainings as well. And, and what I came up with was that I needed to test it if I was going to figure it out. And so Amazon allows you to test both automatic and manual ads. And I will say if you're a beginner, automatic is a really great way to learn. And the really cool thing about running automatic ads is when you put a little money behind it, I will tell you, I didn't have a big budget because I wanted to generate a passive income stream from nothing. You know, that's the great thing, the low barrier to entry on KDP. So I told myself my budget will be like $40. That's, that will be my budget. And I, if I don't spend that much in a week, we'll revisit. So $40 so, a week. Yeah. Yeah. So I set my bid amount, like everyone's like, start at 11 cents. I'm like, nope, I don't have money. Like two cents. If it's not spending in two hours, three cents. Like I'm very like baby foot stuff because I want to learn the process and I don't want to run out of money and not get any information because when you're running ads and you get information, it's king. We say data is king. And so after um, about $20, I sold a book and my profit was enough to put it back in. And the cool thing about automatic ads is if you let your ads run long enough, it will tell you the, ser the search terms that are, people are searching that um, they bought your book from. So that was like free information. I took that keyword and I fit it into my next book. I took these keywords where like people are looking. To me, that's more valuable than Publisher Rocket. That's more publisher than, that's more valuable than um, BookBeam because it's real live. It's like what they would say. And um, so that information alone is really powerful if you're looking to expand a pen name and make more complimentary books. It helped me design um, similar books in different colors. Cause I was like, oh, people are searching brown. I'm not like a brown person. Like, and so that really helped me be like, and then getting that sell just, you know, six, seven days later, it's validating. So Amazon ads is not just about making money but it's about getting data and more information about your customer. A lot of people will teach that after you run automatic ads, you can get those search terms and then um, export them and up upload them into a manual ad. And then you're getting more um, zeroed in on your customer. You might pay a little bit more per click, but they are successful. So there's a lot of different strategies there. Um, the most popular one, if you're a beginner, is taking maybe 10 or 20 books into one campaign with a budget and a bid amount and then letting your books do letting the algorithm work on your books and you'll get little cells for like one a cost a a cost and then that kind of tells you this book's validated let's put it in its own campaign i have not scaled a lottery ad campaign to this day and i don't recommend it to anybody because you're carrying dead weight with you and it's all the books that aren't selling so you can literally just pause those books and keep adding to your budget and i will tell you anyone the the worst thing i ever did when i learned facebook ads as I didn't put my money back into my ads when I was profiting. I was making like $10,000 a month with ads. I was like, this is so cool. Let's pay all these bills. And then like, I didn't have time to put money back into it to keep scaling. So it got really hard and I had to turn off my ads. So this, this time around, I'm like really learning my lesson. And I just learned that in Q4 for November and December, people spend two to three times as much in their ads to quadruple their, their sales. So I'm kind of in a position to test that out and see how it goes. Amazing. Well, can't, can't wait to hear about those results. <laughs> You'll have to come back and tell us all about it. Um, so, okay, you're, you were an LCPA student. Which parts of the program did you find the most helpful? I literally felt like a light bulb went on when I went through the keywords. Like, and I don't know if that's because I have a design background. So I was just like, yes, I get it. I get it. I get it. But like the keywords, I was like, this was the missing puzzle piece for me. And I almost felt kind of humbled. Like, how dare I try to talk to my customer in a way that they're not even communicating? You know, I think, I think sometimes it's intimidating. So we just kind of write what we want. And that's not, that's not a good customer service, you know, um, interaction so the keyword thing really helps me and I tell everybody on my YouTube channel like go buy Rachel's course like go do the keyword thing because it's really powerful and so that's really what I believe changed for me is that I learned the seven different ways to talk to a customer on the back end amazing 
So, okay, you've obviously been experiencing a lot of success. Are there any ways that your life has changed since you started having this kind of success? Um, it has brought me just a lot of peace to not, um, as a course creator and doing a coaching program, I had a lot of support where I'm talking and emailing to people. And this past year of 2021, I just really wanted to see if I could achieve more time freedom in my life and relationship freedom. And I really see that KDP is doing that. And um, I have a goal to retire my husband, like said it out loud a couple times within three to four years. And he, we have a couple rental properties that we have saved up for years. And so he's kind of challenged me like, Hey, how about you, you buy, you use the next, our next down payment is in your business. Like you use your KDP profits. And I'm like, okay, like it, let's do this. Let's manifest like my YouTube video in, I don't know, eight months, I bought a house with my KDP royalties. Like, oh so gosh, little things amazing. like that, it's just kind of allowed me to be like, you know what? Okay. Let's really explore this and see what's out there. Another thing that it's done for my family is, um, my little, when I was in fifth grade, I was assigned to a first grader to read with her and she was correcting me reading. And I realized I had a deficit that I didn't realize that I had at that time. And I had a lot of shame around it. So when my kids were in school, I decided I didn't want them to struggle reading. And so me and my um, first year, first grader at the time, this was last year, we read 1000 books together. And I created a journal called the 1000 book journal where you write down all the books. And what happened is we found so many authors that we wouldn't have found otherwise because of this wonderful world. And we would leave these amazing reviews and they would personally email me like, Jenny, we loved your review. And I was like, how amazing are books? So just this whole world kind of opened my eyes. And um, I set up a shop for my little boys. Um, they have a, they have a KDP shop of coloring books that we've done together. And instead of doing lemonade stand, stands this summer, I said, you know, the boys are saving money for this, go to their shop and people love it. So it's so cool. I love it's got, that. Idea. It's got my 14 year old to be like, what did you make this month, mom? Like, what can I do? What? Cause he reads more Kindle than anybody else in our house. And I'm like, son, you're sleeping on this, but I, you know, he's a teenager. What a too, cool so. idea. I love that so much. Yeah. So what we want to do with our kids is just have build up that revenue for them and have them participate in the process so they can kind of see what it's like. And that's just all under my KDP account. We really haven't expanded to like, you know, formal form formality of it. But people love supporting their shop. The grandparents love it. We've even taken their paintings and I've scanned those in and made those covers to books. So it's like hand painted and people really love that. So if this is something you think, oh, I can't do it because it takes away time for my kids, like do stuff with your kids, you oh, know? And I've even taken photos, idea. like paintings I didn't want to throw away and I scanned it and I made it a book and I was like, now everyone on Amazon can have my kids' drawings, you know? Like I'm obviously the only one that cares about it, but it was still a really cool experience that like, they're published authors and that they're so little, cool. they're, they're five and seven. Oh, that is just such a great, great idea. That that's awesome. I absolutely love that. So we kind of talked about what your goals are for, you know, beyond 2022 retire your husband. That's fantastic. Um, just to end off here, do you have any advice for anyone who's just starting out with low content publishing right now? And they're maybe struggling or, you know, they, they can't quite get it, can't quite wrap their head around it, or, you know, they're not making sales and they don't know why. Yeah, well, I would say buy Rachel's course. She even is so gracious to put it on a payment plan. And I'm sure like that is, that is enough. That is enough to get started. And I would say the other wins is understanding that it's really a marathon. It's not really, we talk about how to make money really quickly. But there's a lot of homework that goes into creating a book. And the last time I had talked to you, Rachel, I talked about that a good book is like a, you know, Halloween's coming up, but it's like a body. And if we don't have a good cover, that's the outside. What is the perception that people are going to have? If the description's not good, you know, how are they going to feel about the cover? And then the keywords are kind of the lifeblood. So I really feel like if you haven't had success yet, ask yourself, have I worked hard enough to understand keywords? Am I, am I creating something that's going to work towards the algorithm or against it? 
I spent a whole day reading the KDP terms and agreements because I didn't want any of those termination things. And it does and, take a day. <laughs> it does take, yeah. Bring and lots it, of coffee for that one. <laughs> yeah. And it's good. And really it's our job as a self-publisher to understand those. It's not a YouTube videos job if something happens. And so it's really just kind of taking that extreme ownership that if you really want it, there is a place for you at KDP on KDP and you'll be able to publish things. And also the last thing that I want you to remember anyone that might be struggling is your, your struggle becomes your story. And a lot of people want to get to the top of the mountain and they don't really share about the hard work. And I always tell this really funny story. I did a study abroad for photography in Peru and I carried my own backpack up Machu Picchu because I was like that tough girl and I beat everybody to the top. And then when I got to the top, I fell down. I didn't fall all the way down the summit, but I fell enough to be like, okay, that was so funny. And it really reminded me of like, nothing could really compensate for all that I had just done when I was at the top, like nothing. It was really the journey that developed my strength to be able to keep going. And so if you are struggling, I would say just kind of like embrace it and give yourself a little bit of grace, take breaks. But I would say don't give up because I really think it, there is some foolproof things going on with this book movement and it's not going away. Great, great advice. Thank you. So Jenny, where can people find you if they want to follow your KDP journey? I know you've got a YouTube channel where you talk about your KDP journey and I know lots of people are going to want to keep up with that. So what's, that your, is, what's your YouTube yeah. channel? Yeah, that is the best place to find me right now. It's Jenny Hanson Lane, just on YouTube. If you type in Jenny Hanson Lane on the internet, you'll find me on every social media platform. But right now I am, I am really driven right now to document my journey up this mountain. So you're going to see me fall down in videos. You're going to talk about how I had an ad that like zero, you know, I spent $40 today because I'm scaling an ad. And I got zero cells. Like, what am I going to do? And it's just, it's a roller coaster. But I think if you document it, then it empowers you to keep going. And then it helps you see the small wins behind you. Like, okay, I actually started with zero books January 1st. Being consistent and publishing often. Keep an notepad by you and write down little ideas and then go check them. Because you never know when that idea is going to turn to something really big. Fantastic. Well, thank you so, so much. Everyone go and check out Jenny's YouTube channel. Jenny, thanks again for being here. My pleasure. Thank Talk you guys. You soon. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got a ton of useful information from my chat with Jenny. If you want to find out more about how to get started with low content publishing, download my free guide, Three Steps to Publishing Your First Low Content Book in Less Than a Day by clicking that link in the description below. You're also welcome to attend my free masterclass, Three Secrets to a Wildly Successful Low Content Publishing Business, also linked to below. Inside the masterclass, you're going to learn the four things you must do before creating your low content book, the five-step formula for writing a book description that sells, the three mindset musts for low content publishing success, and you'll also learn more about my paid program, a program that Jenny is a student of, Low Content Profits Academy. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe, and share it with anyone you think might find it helpful. For another low content publishing success story, check out this video next see how another one of my star Low Content Profits Academy students is making $5,000 a month on KDP with no ads. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.